Hey, it's Christina with Tina Girl Travels. We're here at Stella Beach Resort in Makati Bay in Hergata, Egypt. Let's have a look around the resort. All right, let's first have a look on Google Maps of the area we're talking about. This is Hergada, Egypt. This is where we flew into. We actually took a seven day cruise out of Safaga. And then when we came back, we spent a week in Makati Bay. So I'm gonna show you this area. It's a little teeny, teeny little bay here with about 30 resorts. Each uh, little slice of resort there has multiple resorts in it. And we chose this area because of this walkway that goes right out to the edge of the coral reef which I'm going to talk a little bit more about later all right so we've just got off our cruise ship and we are taking ABC taxi I think it was called we had arranged and he's driving us to Makati Bay and I just want to show you like on the right is the beautiful Red Sea and on the left is tons and tons of building happening in this city now this isn't dangerous at all hey like two people on a motorcycle they're just chatting away with the truck driver and we're gonna pass on the right no problem Egypt has its own set of rules for things let's just look out at the Red Sea and relax for a little bit all right we're arriving at Stella Beach Makati Bay and we will check in at the main building right here and inside it's actually quite beautiful so we arrived a little bit early, um, probably just around noon, and I think check-in is at like three o'clock or something like that. They gave us um, our wristbands and we were able to go have lunch and we just left our bags at the front desk. Now this is the only area with free Wi-Fi. So normally this area was actually quite full and packed with people sitting all over the place and just using that free Wi-Fi. Otherwise they charge per day and I'm sorry, I can't remember what the charge was, but this is where people hung out. I downloaded an eSIM by Arlo in my phone and it worked perfectly. I had Wi-Fi throughout the whole resort. I'll add a link to that below if you want to check that out. This is where you would also um, book a taxi if you wanted one into town. Seven euros per person to get into town. The airport was actually quite expensive. One way at 24 euros. That's price per car. Um, we actually booked ABC Taxi and got it for far cheaper than that. They don't like to tell you that. Um, they want you to use their taxi service. I'm sure they get some kind of kickback. Lots of areas to sit here and it was nice and cool and air conditioned. In this area, you're also going to find out about what's happening around the resort. So you can come and have a look at the sheets of paper. Um, you can book the restaurants that are in the area. So there's one Italian restaurant that I'll show you later and there's also an Indian restaurant. If you're there for a week, you can go to both restaurants. Otherwise, you would just eat at the buffet. So this is the Stella Beach Animation Program, which is their entertainment in the evening. And actually, we never ended up going to any of them. We just found them to be too late. We're not really uh, late night people. We're more morning people. So we missed out on all of those. Um, lots and lots of tour companies that will come through and they will advertise taking you to Luxor and this is where you'd arrange that. Let's have a look at our room. So our room was actually really beautiful, nicely newly renovated and the whole resort was being renovated um, while we were there. Uh, there. We got a nice big flat screen TV, we got two water bottles there, we've got a kettle and as we turn around take you into the bathroom area now I love this toilet I got to tell you this toilet actually had a built-in bidet which was awesome and a nice big shower with a clothesline in it which was super handy and uh, yeah good water flow everything was great in there everything that you're gonna need blow dryer on the wall nice um, magnifying mirror and the closets on both sides. So this side actually had a safe, which we used. Be sure to utilize that safe. Put your passports, put your cash in there and your cameras and things. Really easy to use. Just close it up, put your code in and make sure to leave it open when you leave. Closet on this side as well. Lots of shelves, perfect storage. It's kind of nice to unpack when you're there for a longer period of time. 
So inside here, you're gonna find a little fridge. We were able to put a few drinks in there, which was really nice. Let's have a look at the balcony. So our room was beautiful. We had a beautiful red sea view and uh, this is the view of the pool from our room and it was never noisy. It was actually very nice. So right there, you can see there's kind of a little cafe area. Uh, they serve different snacks and things at lunchtime. That's our room right there. And every day they would do something nice like this with fresh flowers on our beds. And it was just a really pretty touch. Our room steward was very nice or our, our room cleaner. I'm not sure what you would call them down there, but anyways, he was really nice and attentive and took good care of our stuff. As the sun goes down, the pool actually closed early. It was closed at like six o'clock. It was kind of chilly, I have to say. Uh, we were there in March and it's definitely not a heated pool. So keep that in mind. Um, the actually swimming in the Red Sea was warmer, but it was very beautiful. Nice little pool to swim around. Lots of people were playing volleyball and having drinks by the pool. Let's go check out the area where you eat. So that's the stage right there where the shows are in the evening. You can sit in this covered area, which was really beautiful. The only thing I didn't love about it was this was the smoking area. So if you sat out here to enjoy being outside, you were sitting in plumes of people's smoke. So I kind of wish this was broken up a little bit um, with a non-smoking area outside as well. As we're walking along here, just off to the right ahead of us, there are the lighter color buildings. Those are the restaurants that you can go to, the Indian and the Italian restaurant. I'll show you those a little closer in a second. So this is a section that's just inside from that smoking section where that entertainment is. And of course, this entire beautiful area was smoking as well. So that was a little bit disappointing outside on this patio area what a beautiful place to hang out ping pong and billiards or pool and now we're going to head on inside and we're going to have a look at what they're serving for breakfast right here at the entrance it's sort of a courtyard area in the middle of everything there's like a pizza oven or a bread oven and then on the right hand side here they did barbecue in the evenings so we're looking forward to that tonight let's head on in here this is the main buffet area and we're gonna have a look and see what they're serving up this morning. All right, so over to the right here, you'll find cereals, you're going to find some fruit, you'll find sweet things here, um, different breads and different pastries. And they were okay, they were pretty good. I'm gonna be honest with you about the food. We found the same thing on the cruise ship as well that we were just on. I'm not sure if it's an Egyptian food quality or what, but I didn't love it. I found the food really unappetizing, like weird textures, like the cheese was weird. The desserts were over the top colored with bright red or green or orange. Uh, my favorite foods turn out to be like honeydew melon and the fruits, uh, the fresh made falafel and the freshly baked flatbreads. They were really good. Um, other than that, it was just okay. Um, I have no other resorts to compare the experience with, so I'll just leave you with that thought. I actually brought my own uh, reusable Starbucks mug, which I was happy about. Um, I could just reuse that all the time. There's the falafels there. They were really delicious. The food that they grilled outside here, they had a seafood night and they did some shrimp that was very good. And then there was a lady that was baking bread here and that was delicious as well. Let's chat about the drinks. They had something like Tang that was sort of always out. They had a few different uh, soft drinks available. Um, and then they had coffee and teas and they had a coffee machine like this that Keith really loved. And um, I actually kind of got into it too by the end of the the holiday so um, those are actually really good let's head on over and have a look at the restaurants that you'll be able to dine at we only had dinner at the Italian restaurant but there are two there's also an Indian restaurant that you can dine in and you need to make reservations and you do that in the resort lobby where you checked in the earliest reservation is at 6 p.m. It's all part of your all-inclusive experience, so there's no extra charge to dine here. We sat in the little outdoor area here. It was so beautiful in the evening with candlelight and a light breeze. Um, I had lasagna and Keith had a beef dish. We had salads and wine and of course a selection of bread. It was actually pretty good. 
Here's a look at the Indian restaurant. I just love the architecture in here and I love the big open window. So super nice to be able to sit in there and dine in the evenings as well. So pretty much all of the resorts have some kind of shopping. And I was actually very surprised at how many shops there were here. It kind of just kept going and going. Um, let me tell you, these shop owners were hungry for business. This guy here was actually pretty decent. I had a good long chat with him. And in fact, I chatted a long time with several of the store owners. Honestly, normally I love shopping, especially if you've watched my channel, you know, I've shopped globally and it's one of my favorite things to do. But in Egypt, I actually grew to dislike shopping so much. The haggling is nonstop. It is next level haggling. The products that they sell are so gaudy and not something I would ever want to display in my house and the t-shirts and the bags are just knockoffs they're cheaply made I told one of the store owners that if they just had a fixed price that was fair I would have shopped there all day long but they just can't imagine doing that in their culture we ended up going off-site to shop and I'll tell you more about that adventure in a minute Egypt in general is just dirty and rubbly and the shop area of this resort is no exception. As you get deeper into this market, it just feels like it needs a little pressure wash, throw out all the broken garbage. It just makes it feel creepy. You could open a coffee shop here or a juice bar with some outdoor seating, make it feel nice. They could really make something of this place and attract customers that are staying at that resort anyways, if they cleaned it up and had a vision. You can buy a few things here that are helpful if you forgot to bring them. They sold sunscreen, hats, bathing suits and cover-ups, t-shirts, snorkel gear, and of course, souvenirs. The stores accept Egyptian pounds, euros, US dollars, and credit cards. Let's head down to the beach. So you wanna keep an eye on the flags. They will tell you if it's safe to go in the water or not. We had one super windy day and basically they had to close the beach and the walkway into the water. Another thing to mention that I didn't love was the endless salespeople approaching you. We were literally just trying to go for a walk and we were bombarded by salespeople trying to sell us everything. Good variety. Already done that. Would you like that? Already done that. Thank you. Hi. 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 Bob. Oh, hi Bob. You remember? You remember me? <laughs> How are you doing? They will try and sell you scuba lessons, snorkeling tours, boat tours, spa treatments, haircuts, you name it, they will sell it to you. All right, let's head out on the quarter mile long pedestrian walkway. This is the reason I booked this specific resort. I loved the idea of the coral reef and being able to walk out to it. At the end, you'll find a large deck with chairs and umbrellas, and you're welcome to stay there all day if you want. I love this, it was amazing. There are stairs going right into the water. You can snorkel right there. There was an attendant working this area. He had some snorkels available. We just gave him a little tip to be able to use them. He didn't ask for a tip, but we felt it was just a nice gesture. We were grateful that he had them there. I had the full face mask and Keith had like the goggles with the, with the snorkel. If you're wondering, I personally liked the one that Keith had better, the goggles with the snorkel. It was way easier to breathe than the full face mask. I also did buy a pool noodle from one of the shops on the beach. He had a few new ones out front for 10 euros and he had used ones out behind the shop for I think we offered him three or four euros for it. Okay, well, that's an eyeful for you. I'm sure she's wearing something, maybe a thong, I hope so. I wanna mention though, you need to be wearing a sunscreen that is safe for swimming near a coral reef. It should say reef safe on the container. Let's jump in and have a look. This is my first time taking my GoPro 11 underwater with me. Hopefully I got some good video. So I'm swimming fairly close to the dock. It's quite wavy and I'm finding that breathing through the face mask is really hard. There are some fish and corals out here, but we were told that farther down the reef, like out towards the Red Sea in that direction, the farther you swim, the better it gets. You might even see some sea turtles out there. 
So Makati Bay is actually quite big and yes, you can leave the resort. The front desk said we couldn't, but we did anyway and everyone was out walking the bay. I have to say we actually found better swimming farther down the bay. So if you're into snorkeling the reef, this is a great place to stay. But if you want to get directly into the water and just swim from shore, there are other better resorts farther down the beach. The Red Sea does have tides and when the tide is out, the beach is really ugly and muddy. So one fun thing we wanted to do was ride a camel and there was one on the beach that we could ride. It was super fun and pretty affordable and now I can cross that off my list. I have to tell you about my experience at the spa. It was just weird. So I went to film the spa for this video and I had a look around. It was pretty quiet in there. And when I got back, one of the poolside salespeople talked me into the Cleopatra treatment, which includes a massage, a peeling mask, sauna, steam bath, and a jacuzzi. The salespeople definitely can offer you a better deal than what they give you at the front desk of the spa. It started with me sitting in the sauna for about 10 minutes. Then I was brought upstairs to a room with multiple massage beds in it. That was the first weird part. Um, so I had no privacy at all. This lady from Eastern Europe rubbed me, kneaded me, hammered me. And finally she jumped on the table, straddling me and carried on with this crazy massage. Finally, at the end of the massage, I had a tapping on my lips and she's saying, Guten Morgen, Bon Bon, as she's tapping my lips with this peppermint, which was so strange. Then she proceeds to lead me through the entire building and I'm wrapped in just a towel and there's people everywhere. And we come into another smaller room where I get scrubbed down of my, like of my entire exposed body with something weirdly familiar. It turns out that it was coconut in oil. Then she wraps me in plastic and I lay there under these bright fluorescent lights, listening to what sounds like a board meeting happening right outside the door. So then she finally comes back. She walks me across the hall to this shower with this frosted glass door that won't stay closed. I have oil and coconut in every single nook and cranny of my body and it's not coming off my skin. So I'm trying to hold the door shut with one arm and get the stuff off my body with the other. Oh my goodness. Then she comes and puts me into the steam sauna and I literally can't see more than six inches from my face. I can hear that there are other people in the room, both men and women. They have no idea that I'm there. I tell you, it was so incredibly awkward and the weirdest spa experience I I've ever had for sure. If you want a crazy Egyptian spa experience, then go for it. Otherwise, I have another suggestion that was far nicer. On the beach, there was a fish foot pedicure done by these lovely little fishies and a competent masseuse. It was really, really lovely. There's some really nice places to hang out at this resort. They had some beautiful swings and seating areas. There's also arcade games and you can play beach games like bowls or bocce. There's a uh, miniature golf. I think there was an extra charge for miniature golf and lots of places to walk. Now, one thing we did do was we actually rented a taxi and we went into Hergada. At first they took us to a souk market, which we ended up turning around in about a five minutes, literally because they just would not leave us alone. They had sent us with a special guide and uh, he just tailed us the whole time. So we called our taxi back. He took us to this Senzo mall, which was really cool. There was this outdoor area here. And then inside the mall, we found this grocery store actually that had great um, souvenirs. I love the alabaster. You can put a candle underneath there. They're quite heavy to take home, but they were so pretty. Keith always wants to try McDonald's in every country. Egypt had the biggest burger we have ever seen. It's called the McRoyal. You may want to give that a try if you like McDonald's burgers. It was actually really good. We also arranged a ride with the resort on their shuttle bus to the main shopping strip on Sheraton Road, which was worth seeing, especially if you want something to do in the evening. This place just comes alive. Lots of shops, cafes, restaurants. We felt very safe here. It was a fun experience. Well, I hope you enjoyed my tour of the Stella Beach Resort in Makati Bay. Would I go back? Yes, absolutely. We had a great time. 
Staying in an all-inclusive in Egypt is very inexpensive. Definitely choose a resort with a higher star rating and good reviews. I've added some links below for the Aerolo eSIM for data on your cell phone. I've also added links to the best anti-pickpocket day packs and crossbody bags and the luggage that we travel with. Be sure to check out my channel and subscribe. I have loads and loads of cool videos coming up that you won't want to miss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Tina Girl Travels.